All right, this is episode three of Crossroads with the Burdens. Today we're going to talk about a couple different topics. Um, To start off, uh, we just got back from Daytona, um, and my uh, little cousin won the biggest race of his career um, this past weekend, and I had a really good car in my race as well. Um, So probably just start off with my race first um we go down to daytona and we don't get any practice we go right into qualifying and um that that's a little unique because you you don't get a chance to you really got to make sure your mirrors and everything are exactly how um you want them in the in the car and then one thing that's that's always a lot different when you're out in the uh car and qualifying is the car is like the front of the nose is down and the rear of the car is up because the rear of the car is not traveling as much so when you're qualifying it makes it look like your mirror is wrong because the car's standing like this And when you get in the pack and the speed picks up three seconds, the back of the car lays down more. So then you can see more out of your mirrors. So um, you really, you really got to make sure that your, your mirrors are right. And um, that's one thing that I always try to pay attention to extra when, when I go to uh, speedways, but we qualified, we qualified 21st, um, I think a tenth of a second was like five spots, so it was close. And then um, we started the race, and I passed five cars before we got to the back straightaway. And we had a lot of speed, and they wrecked getting into turn three the first lap. Luckily, we were able to miss that. Um, then we were going through the first stage, and the car was fast just was trying to figure out a way to get up get up front could never really get the position that I that I wanted to get in and the car was a little free uh starting to get freer the first into the first stage and then going down the back straightaway coming to the um end of the stage I thought I put myself in the best situation that I could be in and um the the nine car I don't know if he didn't know I was there or he got hit in the rear or something but he just turned left when I was all the way up to his door number and he came across the right front and hit um, hit me and it cut the right front tire down luckily I felt it soon enough and got out of the gas and didn't knock the wall down to ruin our day yeah you were very uh very fortunate then go back what you originally said i know that's got to be really hard not having any practice uh to get your creature comfort stuff with your mirrors the safety and all right um that's got to really that's got to really put a a toll on the preparation y'all got to do with no practice and then yeah i don't who drives a nine car? Brandon Jones. That's right. Uh, I don't know. It was it was weird. Didn't look like anybody hit him. I can't believe a spotter would have cleared him. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. That was, you were very fortunate. You you saw it coming, so you were able to react. Otherwise, it'll wreck both of you. So you were able to turn left right before he got there. And uh, for you to tell you had a right front tire going down. Saved y'all day. That could have been a disastrous. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Oh. So that that happened. We I pit it, and then um, the next stage, um, me and AJ went straight to the front. Um, I know that was that was the that was the, the after the second stage. So the next stage going into the first stage we started running chain made some good adjustments got me where i could 
felt more comfortable. Started making some good moves. Um, and started working with the seven car. And I saw the seven car coming, kind of speed through this stage a little bit. Um, it was about six, seven laps to go. In the middle of the second stage, it always seems like it gets kind of everybody rides for a minute and then the business picks back up. And you looked at the tape. Have you watched the race? Yep. So what I couldn't figure out, it didn't show it real clear, but I thought the 81 car was, you were passing the 81 car, the 81's in the middle. And for some reason or the next thing I could tell, you were in the middle and that's when the seven, the whole train went yep. past you. What, what happened with that? Well, I was passing the 81, and he came down to side draft me a little bit. And when he did that, it, like, pulled my car to the right a little bit, and it pulled his car to the left, and we made contact. And it pulled my car to the right, and it almost wrecked me in the middle of the travel. I saw the contact. I couldn't tell. So that's why. He what? didn't mean to do it, and I didn't mean. It was just a. I was looking in my mirror at him when I was passing him, and then I was looking at the seven coming. I was in a perfect spot. That was going to. I was going to win the stage because the seven car won the stage, and I was going to put you myself. You in the perfect spot yeah. had the seven. You had the line. Where the seven had to follow you along. Yeah, it was it was perfect. I couldn't figure out what happened. I was not happy with that because I worked so hard to get there, and then that happened, and then we finished fifth in that stage, so it still got some yeah, points. Yeah, it was good time. Well, it doesn't really seem like the eighty-one. Uh, he didn't mean to meant do it. to do anything. No, but at the time, I was mad because I thought he did. I didn't know what happened. I was just. Not happy. It was kind of weird because when I, from my point of view, for some reason or another, it looked like you wanted to go up and there wasn't enough room. Y'all made contact. I didn't want to go up. Why would I? No, nah, hell no. Up? It was not the place to be. No. When, to so I don't know what happened going. there. But and then um, go into the, we finished fifth that stage. And one good thing is at Michigan, we finished ninth in a stage. We drove there. We finished there. Yeah. And then this past weekend, we finished fifth in the stage. So that's yeah. two weeks in a row that we got stage points. And our team, though, I hate stage racing points. And this is why I don't like stage points. I don't like it because it doesn't reward someone being consistent finishing races. You can go get stage points every week and crash all the time. And you're safe because you got stage points. So it back in the day, Matt Kenseth won a championship and he didn't even win a race. It's uh it it, it, it hurts a little team like us because yeah. a lot of the times we don't have the speed in the middle of the race to get or the first of the race because we don't have practice to get our stuff even closer. We're missing points. Every week we're missing points the first two stages. But then at the end of the race, we finish. You're probably still missing points. That's the problem. You're getting, yeah, but you're it would be pointed, closer. Pointed, pointed. I, I understand. Last your year, here's your example. Last year I would have finished seventh in points when the chase started. I was seventh in points. I missed the chase by 100 points if I didn't win the race. 100 stage points last year. But my consistency – I would have been seventh or eighth in points if if it wasn't for stage racing. So that's what I'm saying. I did the math and we looked at it. I would have been seventh in points in the old Bush days. So with a little team, then all of a sudden the conversation's a lot different, but it gets hidden because of stage racing. Yeah. So that's frustrating. But nothing we can do about it. Um, um, but then we go into the, the, the last stage of the race – and me and AJ are starting like 20th and 23rd or something. And the seven car is there too. AJ lines up behind the seven car. AJ spends like a lap pushing the seven car. And they're not going anywhere. I didn't know if Justin didn't want to go or what. And then AJ said, the heck with this. 
he turned down under the seven car and i told aj for the race i'll go with him and he went and i just pushed him and we went from 20 something to the top three in a lap and a half and our cars were flying it felt like when i was at uh colleague working with aj it was that was that was a lot of fun so we wanted to get hooked up more during the race but for whatever reason we couldn't that was the only time we did but we went flying up through the field and we, we i was there for the next eight or nine laps i got to um me and aj got split up i got to the bottom line leading the pack i was gonna about take the lead and the 39 car got hooked up with me and was pushing me really, really aggressively. And going down the back straightaway tried to pass me when I was on the bottom already. It was like a half a car length hole, and he tried to pass me. And he just had it in his mind that he was not going to stay behind me. And he just kept getting me loose, kept getting me loose, and then coming off of turn four, he was about three inches off my rear bumper, and if I come across his nose, he's not going to lift. He'll wreck me um, in that situation. So I I just let him have it and lived to fight another day and lost everything that I gained. Went back to 15th, so that was really frustrating. You work, 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 and you get there, and I lost everything again. So it was like one thing after another this race, the – the first stage, the nine car thing happened. Um, then the 81 thing happened. And now this happens. It's like, I cannot stay up there. Like for whatever reason, it was one thing after another. And then it's like 25 to go. I'm behind the eight car. I, I'm getting regrouped. And this is when it all went down. We're going through the tribal. I watched the replay. The eight car is too wide. We're on the top. There's nobody in the middle. And the eight car is running the middle-ish. He's not running next to the wall. And he's lower than he is closer to the wall. So a lot of the times when the top lane is formed up, if you don't pay attention, somebody can get in your right rear quarter and and ship you when we all in a line up top and it's all single file i've happened before where somebody got right here on me because I, I i let them there and no, you don't let you don't let them there yeah that's what I, that's that, what, it was already three wide it got three wide cross start finish it line. it when i got there then it did <clears throat> it was a bad when you got there then you would have made it four wide so the replay that i just watched before we did this there was nobody under him. Right when I got here, then the 81 got there. I can't control what other people are doing. No, I, I know. It, it, I just, can't, it was a bad situation. Yep. And the way we all came together, I clipped him by six inches. And it was it was not intent at all. I wrecked myself. Like, it just was frustrating. Um, so, what? anyway... The eight car slid up a little bit. We were four wide, and it wrecked us. And then I just rode around and finished seventeenth. But the moral of the story is I shouldn't have put I shouldn't have put myself in that situation. But ninety percent of the time, the moves that I make on the speedway work. So if if sometimes that's gonna it's just gonna happen. If he if he I don't think he knew I was there, first off. If he well, knew it's a bunch of things that go on, son. First of all, like you said, recap. It's a bunch of things that happen when you at game position that normally doesn't happen to you. Yeah. And that was that was the fourth occurrence. So I will say to you any other driver when these things are happening, sometimes it's like a nine car. A nine car didn't mean to do it because nine car is lucky as hell that he won't wreck and the 27. And who knows how many other cars for him to make that abrupt move and you're there. So that's just an example. 
everybody got, it's an easy thing to get frustrated. It's an easy thing to become more aggressive. It's an easy thing to not take your time any longer. And I'm not saying that's what happened with you, but when you look at all these things, that would be your natural I think I, I, that, de- that had definitely something to do with it. What, what happened was all of that happened, and you get back there, and you the eight cars all over the place. Well, it's because the eight cars way too loose. Yeah. So all he's doing is hanging on. Yep. The upper the upper line was going to make momentum, and you know the deal. Look, it's just like what happened the next day on Saturday. These these races, particularly at Daytona. On TV, it looks like a wide racetrack. It is not wide. No. It's not even remotely similar to a Talladega. Nope. Daytona is Daytona. It's almost like when y'all go race, restricted plate racing at Atlanta. It's not that How, bad, but it's close. It's close. So, so all it takes is one thing. You know, it's going to happen. I was shocked that it didn't happen when y'all win in the Xfinity race. It was a one-two, an overtime with two laps to go. But hey, man, you live and learn. Everything with those races, dreams come true. Dreams are, sh- are splattered uh, when you're right there and getting ready to capitalize on a day of a lifetime. It can be taken away of a split of a moment with none of the person's doing and it's just wrong place wrong time or in the right place wrong time and it's a lot of luck so you 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 are a good plate racer you always have been you've had a lot of chances to win that race next year you're gonna have some more chances i don't know why that place you you just you just have had some uh some mishaps, but I will say, just like to you, the eight car and everybody else, you can't leave those doors open. The eight car should have not have left enough room for as much as you were tucked there for you to even be able to look on the outside. Because drivers are drivers, and they're always trying to gain position. So everybody, everybody's learning, and that's a mistake that the best in the business make. And particularly when the car is not handling good. and and So part of it, I will say, is like when Brett Griffin was spotting, and even Mike Herman now, but I learned it from Brett because I started with Brett. And Brett helped me get Mike um, as my spotter. Okay. That's how I got Mike. And so the first time Brett was spotting for me at Talladega, we were all running the top, and we were in single file, and he was yelling at me because I was leaving a half a car length I remember. because I couldn't see what happens is you think everybody's just single file, da, da, da. But when you're single file, a lot of the times you can't see what's in front of you. And sometimes you almost hit the wall because I couldn't, I couldn't see, I was so far back. I couldn't see what I needed to see. He was telling you that you were leaving the, groove on the upper groove open that's yeah. what he was telling me yeah. it's got nothing to do with the car in front no of i know but that's why i was hanging down i just was more comfortable that's, to yeah, do yeah i'll follow you so that's why i was doing that because all it takes is and it it happened it happened at daytona it couldn't happen the cup series because hell that three abreast the whole damn time yeah. it's and it's a shame on these races and i don't know what the sanctioning body even thinks about it or if they do at all but the tires need to wear out like it did when we used to race. Yeah, that would that would and that that would make that then then you got the the field splits up and the races are just as good. But I mean this this damn of three abreast for the entire race is is, is insane and it's going to happen. Well if the three of us went out here and kept riding in circles around my driveway on bicycles, we're going to eventually crash. So you take 38 guys, <laughs> it's going to happen, man. Yeah. It's, it's, I know. I saw Denny Hamlin talking about it yesterday. He said the speedway racing now, what made him so good 
It ain't the same. No, he what what made him good is his car handled. He could put himself in position, but hell, everybody's car is handling now. Yeah, it's it's and just it got them slowed down too much, and three, it's just three wide. I mean, it's just oh no, and really, there's nowhere to go. So, on your race, the only th- the great thing is you got these you got these TV clips. You can go back and watch that race. The mistakes that were made, the good moves that were made, you can go back and watch whether you were a part of or not of how people controlled the race. The 20 car and the 16 car and the 48 car were the three best cars during the entire race. The 20 car got dropped back a bunch of times, more than the 48 and the 16. But to go back and watch, it's really important. If you want to be better, you go back and watch. If the, if the package is similar next time you go there, it, it, it is worthy of watching. Because you, you can't, that's the only, only way you can learn. It's, it's a great tool. Yep. But anyway, man, you, uh, you, y'all were fortunate to come back and finish where you did. Uh, your team built you a strong car. They, you had a strong call, and then and then for Jordan, unfortunately Parker got caught up in you and eight cars uh, situation, and then Jordan comes back. All Jordan did all night long was ride. Jordan got up in there two to three times, and I heard Larry Max say yesterday, every time he says I'm bailing, and within five laps they were wrecked. So it's something. It's something to consider. I'm not racing like that. Well, I, I understand, I'm not, I'm but when doing. when you see it about to maybe, because sometimes, man, you can almost see it materialize. And who, like when you talk about the 39, the commentator even said after I watched the race how aggressive he was being. Some some cars, the way they're handling, the way their car is, you they can take pushes and others can't. So. I don't know whether he could see it or not. Obviously, the 27 didn't like the way he was pushing, but anyway. The difference with Jordan's situation is mine is I I want to win the race 100%, and I'm not going to win the race by riding and just sticking my nose in there at the end. I need to win 100%. He wants to win too, don't get me wrong. But for him to go there with a new sponsor and have a good finish – um was great i want to i want to be there and get tv time for my sponsors all night right and when i've won these races it didn't come from riding no i understand so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna change anything that that i do on that but um the next race um i didn't really watch much of the race but i watched the end of it and harrison did the same thing he did he wasn't up front any all night he wasn't there he was in the back i never i never saw him and then they kept wrecking and kept wrecking and then all of a sudden seven eight to go there he is he's in top 10 top five and then they wrecked again and he restarted on the front row i think it was 20 to go and harrison was probably 15th to 20th he had already survived a bunch of stuff and um, when the 32 got turned around, that's McDaniel's number? McDowell. McDowell's number, 32. Uh, no, it's not 32. 34. 34, yeah. Yeah, when the two car turned to 34. And that, that was a weird deal. It's really similar, kind of. I watched it back. He gave him a shot getting in the corner. He hit him getting in the corner. What made the 34 get a little upset? Yeah, well, it all, it all boils down to, man, and, you know, I'm not saying the 34 did. 34 did what he had to do. It all boils down to trying to control lines and move from this line to that line, which, which the driver don't have much choice anymore with being three wide. So, you know. It was just a bad, it was a racing situation at Daytona that this new type of 
restrictive plate waste is mandating by the driver. And anyway, so if you if you watch it, I mean, the 34 was almost upside down, and people said to me yesterday, they got to figure out how to keep cars in the ground. There's no car that's going to stay on the ground that comes down the track at that speed, at that angle, at that banking, and gets hit in the door, and it's not going to turn him that way. So what it did do is he came down, whereas uh, back in the day at Talladega, Ricky Craven had that happen one time, and he went way up into the uh, catch fence in one and two. But anyhow, if you watch Harrison, the guy behind him slowed down just like the 21 did. And they're just sitting there waiting. And, you know, so, man, you know, that moment – that moment gave him, and as well as a bunch of other moments, that moment gave him the opportunity, and he just mingled his way. And next thing you know, he's sitting there second. But so and then, how about? So let me ask you this: on the restart, so you know, there you got the twenty-one with all the junk Harrison has been through and all the self-doubt that the twenty-one team is posed on him for the last three years here all of a sudden you've got harrison on the front row with your teammate parker lined up right behind him that has done the same thing harrison does has missed all the carnage and here's parker in the 62 car so there's a lot of yapping going on about the 62 shouldn't have pushed a forward what's your thoughts about all that well, the 62 gets their motors, their cars, their seats, their wind. Like, they get every... It's an RCR car. Okay. Okay. And I've talked to Parker about this because he's been concerned about it. And he, you know, Parker's young. Me and Parker what difference talk. did it make? He's got, he's got a car in front of him. I know. You know. I think there was some chatter. I don't, I, I don't know the whole story. Right. But if the team told him to pick the bottom and he didn't, that's one thing. I don't know what happened. But I also told Parker, you're out here for yourself. Yeah. Parker doesn't have a contract for next year that I don't believe. I don't know what he's got going on. But all I know is you're out here for yourself. I've never seen Kyle Busch do something to 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 help help a teammate win a race. He's out well, there for himself. Well, when he was with Gibbs, who knows what he did or didn't do at times. I don't know. You know, I, like, I don't know. All I know is the kid's 21 years old. He's at Daytona in a cup race, and he's fighting for everything he's got, too. Um, the eight car had 20-some weeks to make the chase. Don't put it on the 21-year-old kid. Let me ask you this. What? At the restart, it was 8, 21, and 20, right? And then it was Parker. It was 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Parker wasn't third. Parker was four, right? I don't know. I don't know. If Parker, would, if Parker had been third, I'd have thought he'd have gotten behind Bush. But I think, I think on a restart, he was four. So he would have given up. I think it was something like that. Yeah. Well, that's that's a big that's a big component. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. He's At the there. end of the day, my my thoughts are this: your job is to try to do the best you can do, and and at that moment, Parker's got a chance to win the 400. Should Parker look after somebody else, or have a chance to win the 400? But Parker did a good job. Somebody knocked the you-know-what out of him right before the start-finish line. I think he finished still top ten, didn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, gave, gave Harrison a <clears throat> everything he needed on the backstretch to win the race. And NASCAR made the right decision when he was forced below the line. Yeah. Not, you know, I was really <laughs> – when. I'd had a little bit to drink Saturday night, so when it took me a moment to say, no, nah, they wouldn't do that. And luckily they made the right call. Yeah. But it was very big for him and Jeff and Kim. And yeah. Harrison doesn't have a deal yet for next year, but I think they're getting close on some stuff. So hopefully 
um, it will all work out. And if he if he would have done if he would have won, it's just crazy if 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 he would have won the five hundred instead of the four hundred, he he would still be in that car. You know, for the following following year and winning definitely helps. And he went from thirty something in points last Monday to now he's in the top thirteen in points. And they probably made a lot of money the other night. And um, it's just everything changed in a week's time. Look how much different he is from from this time last year. He's in the playoffs. His teams. Morale's high now. His uh, it's going to help him with contracts. It just everything is humpty dumpty now for him. Well, and let's, that's great. let's say a couple of things. I'll recap and then we'll wrap this podcast up. Brian told me yesterday. And bro, who's tell people who Brian? My brother Brian told me yesterday. There's only been one other family that had three members of their family win those kind of races at Daytona, and that was the Allisons. The Allisons have won three or four, maybe more, I'm not sure. But now we got the Burtons. Your time is going to come. So we got, I got the 500, Harrison and Jeff have got two 400. So that's pretty cool to be in that group. There's no place, there's no speedway, there's no racetrack that, can propel a driver and change a driver's life being on the complete edge between jubilation and all your dreams come true to the worst possible thing that can happen to a driver. There's only one place, and that's Daytona. And that moment in time that's etched in this young man's life took place last Saturday, and hey, he's our family too. We're just all so so happy for our family, and in particular, like you said, um, Harrison, Kim, and Jeff. But you you will have these opportunities. Yep. And you know, with as much as this young man got beat up in the last three years, all those doubters and everybody else can run their mouth and do whatever they want to and keep on kicking him, but nobody can take that day away from him. Yep, that's right. Yep. Well, I, hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, episode three of Crossroads with the Burdens podcast. Um, appreciate y'all tuning in and uh, talk to you soon.